Scarlet Reaper is, or should I say was, a Call of Duty commentary channel that focused on topics within the online discourse of drama, along with some other more questionable topics. Some of you may know that Scarlet Reaper has been the main sweeper for Mr. T Lexify in the current drama, circulating throughout the COD Zombies community where the whole thing has become this complicated garbled mess of statements, allegations, Google documents, and response videos. Scarlet has even had previous personas in the online platforms, dawning an array of alt accounts, and by array, I mean an unhealthy amount. However, due to a certain reason, Scarlet felt like he needed to leave the internet before returning in 2024, and the reason he left may just leave you scratching your heads, as his story makes absolutely no sense in the way he told it. From this video, you will see the troubling behaviour within Scarlet's content, the severe lack of self-awareness, and how he had conducted himself in his investigations, and much much more to come. So let's go through the story of Scarlet Reaper, or as I like to call him, the reverse Mama Max. You call that a punchline? I don't share your sense of humor. Yet we're linked, you and I. Like comedy and tragedy, two sides, same coin. As you will come to know, Scarlet Reaper is a fanboy of a popular commentary channel known as Birdman. You wanna suck my dick? Like, is that what it is? Like, you want a taste of my meat? I, I don't know. Those are really the only two things that make sense to me. Like, if you got a crush on me, bro, you could just say that, man. I don't know. Who came up with the gimmick of the Eugenes. But what are these Eugenes? Well, the term refers to a cringe-worthy weirdo, or people who simp for women, similar to white knighting, or those who look creepy, or at the very least have a creepy attitude. However, Birdman only uses this term on certain individuals, but as you will see, Scarlet uses this term on anyone he disagrees with, or those who call him out for the things he gets wrong, or for the people he quote-unquote exposes, even when the person doesn't fit the bill. Moving into this year, Scarlet is 20 22 years old, where he enjoys watching content on TikTok and YouTube. But a specific TikTok account he had been watching in his spare time had been Vampire, who by Scarlett's own title is 17 years old, which becomes even more weird when he had joined her Discord server on his own volition. Which brings us to the first video on his channel. A 17 year old, e girl Eugene messes with a 13 year old, and it gets deeper. I'm tired of these. E girls part one, where he tells us all of these things in the beginning of the video and creates an allegation that Vampire is a groomer because when she was 16, a 13 year old boy had lied to her about his age, telling her that he was 14, which judging by the messages, she had been freaked out when she learned of the real age. She says, I'm gonna cry. What happened? Bro, so like, this guy lied about his age like he said he was 14 and i was 16 but his friends told me that he was 13 and just turned 14. so like bro it was three years and i gave him the gawk gawk i'm gonna cry what she says neither the, the, the guy who was replying and she says <laughs> he said he was 14. However, I don't really think you can call this to be Vampire grooming a 13 year old since they are both teenagers, which also creates a conflict in his defense of Mr. T Lexify, where he said a three year age gap isn't anything to get worked up over. So if Vampire had thought that she was with someone who was 14, then surely this guy wouldn't have a problem with the age gap, right? Which is even more disingenuous when he doesn't take her story into consideration. But when it happens to a guy with over a million subscribers, suddenly it becomes plausible. But he then claims what Vampire had done was a federal crime when it's not. Now, notice how she says she was 16 at the time of the whole, you know, but it's still a federal crime, bro. Like, she was giving out gawk gawks to kid, kids back in the day, and we don't even know how many of these are victims. Like, maybe 10 or 12 kids, who knows? But what about the evidence? Well, he claims in this video he is hoarding this evidence in his Discord server instead of contacting the authorities for what he believes to have been a crime committed by this girl. Now, most of the evidence can be seen through my Discord server under the channel Vampire Evidence. And 
and this shit is kind of incriminating if you think about it the only reason why some of the evidence won't be posted on this video is because of like youtube guidelines so i really do not want to get a strike remind you of anyone people who will literally kill for me he then tells us other reasons why we shouldn't like this girl without showing sufficient evidence to back any of these claims up and the worst part, and I have evidence to this, but she is literal. She is literally dating a fascist illegal medicine ex-dealer. I can't say the word again. Her videos and pictures are all edited, with her hips being the most heavily edited out of anything we see. And to top it off, this is like promoting unhealthy standards for that beauty shit. This is hella wrong, and no way she'd be doing this to get attention, dude. But if you thought that was bad, he then tells us this 17-year-old looks pretty nice when he just said, when you look at all of her photos, it's all sexualized stuff. Poco just, she's just there uh, complaining, right? That she's trying to, uh, you know, like she's getting groomed and shit or whatever. Like, you know, there's actually some freaks on her shit. But when you look at her profile, dude, like all you see is nothing but sexualization and that's it not going wrong she looked nice and all whatever but she's not my type i don't know about you but this kind of sounds like a self-report to me literally all these freaks the only reason why there's freaks in those comments and in the discord server is because she keeps posting pictures of herself trying to you know like get attention and whatever trying to sexualize herself in the most unrealistic way and trying to show cleavage as well, dude? Like, what? Oh, man. Scarlett also has a theme running through all of his videos where he believes the words of men over women, which is a parallel to how he talks about how society always believes the words of women when they accuse men, which isn't the right way of going about these investigations into these matters and shows that he has a personal bias which will affect his ability to assess these cases in the future. But at the very end of the video, he tells us that this is the first underage Eugene, meaning he believed to have joined an underage girl's discord. What kind of freak is this shit, bro? I think we may have found the first instance of a, a female Eugene that's like underaged. Holy shit. Which makes absolutely no sense for him to be there and no sense to be wavering around these serious allegations towards her. If he believed something nefarious had been going on, then he should have contacted the authorities, but he said he joined the Discord before being told any of these things by any of the friends he made in the server. So he really shouldn't have been there in the first place. And this lack of self-awareness only continues into the second part, titled The E-Gale Eugene and Mexicreepy Eugene's final ride, part two, where he shows us a conversation he had in a Discord call, where he tried to explain his point of view of Vampire promoting unhealthy body standards. Literally does promote unhealthy body standards. You know? So, yeah. What the fuck are we talking about? This guy's yo, a yo, pedophile. Yo, 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 See? See? Scarlet then tells us that there is no evidence of him being a PDF file, but if there was evidence or a key witness, then all he was trying to do here was being a nice guy, making the members feel appreciated. You're supposed to have evidence that this kind of thing happened, and so far, there's been no evidence whatsoever to me doing this type of shit, which kind of already says, oh hey, this shit didn't happen to begin with. And if there was evidence, if there was a key witness and whatever, guess what? I was trying to be a friendly person, trying to make them feel happy and appreciated. So they know that everybody appreciates them for who they are. But apparently so, they did not take that very kindly. They thought of it as flirting. When in the last video, he just admitted to joining an underage girl's discord. Sounds like another self-report to me. He even tells us that the members felt like he and one of his friends had been flirting with them, which is quite troubling. When Cool Dog tells Scarlet he should get a job, he responds like so. Bro, because they're literal, like, D1 pedos and just don't care, all of them over 18, like, real shit, go do something, like, honestly, do y'all even got jobs? Eugene, think, like, dude, y you kind of have to think about this. What about you? Do you have a real job? Because as far as I know, seeing your YouTube channel, dude, I don't even think it's an actual job. 
Now, Scarlet, whenever he gets into beef, will attempt to discredit the things you say by looking for dirt on you, but he doesn't properly research any of the topics or events he finds and just runs with it, only barely scratching the surface of what he sees and doesn't care for the context surrounding the event. And don't be surprised when I say he cuts context to things to get the outcome he desires. To try and discredit Cool Dog, he binges his content to find anything he might have said to try and make him look crazy or untrustworthy. And he calls the content into question, calling it some leftist stuff, and criticizes him on his channel being a digital footprint, but the same sort of logic wasn't applied to himself when joining Vampire's Discord on his own volition. Process. Because Coco, the literal 17 year old I talk about, also happens to be a hoe. And guess what? She sucked dick off of many, many guys. Uh, I'm sorry, Scarlet. How? How do you know this exactly? Is that a man up our tree? No, no, tell her it's a bird. It's just a big bird. Once again, the video becomes creepy when he talks about what Cool Dog's intentions had been with Coco, and the choice of words is something you are just going to have to hear to believe. You're just white knighting her to just get a little bit of that teen HP, but at the end of the day, you're not gonna get it, little bro. And it gets even worse when he tells us that age doesn't matter within the context of the internet. Then Scarlet and Salvi are gonna rate this, just gonna tell y'all these people are turning 18, turning 19, 22, and 19 respectively, worried about what Coco is doing and also worried what I'm doing. Like, guys, be real. What can you guys do? Something else? Why are you guys so miserable? Do you honestly have nothing better to do than to worry about what what two people are doing? You guys are so weird. Javen always talk about, oh, oh, I care, but you guys really don't, and I know you what I'm talking about. Okay, so first off, grammar, <laughs> Eugene, you cannot spell shit right. Second of all, like, I've said this before, but age does not matter whenever you do something on the internet. You know, because there's something called a digital footprint. Yeah, and yours isn't looking too good right now, Eugene. In the next part of the video, he tells us that Coco is an attention seeker because she posts pictures of herself and says how she needs to get some serious help because she doesn't feel confident without makeup on. Like, here's another fucking picture that you seriously need to get some fucking help. Like, bro, is it bad that I feel like I can't look good without makeup. I used to feel confident about it or only wear lashes, but now I can't even do that. So literally what you're trying to say is that you don't feel confident about yourself because you decided to post, oh wait, you decided to post pictures with makeup and whatever. And guess what? It's just for you to fucking gain attention. But even more concerning, he then says this. I mean, look, I'm not saying I'm innocent. Wait, so you're not innocent now? Scarlet spends the video bringing up their issues and denying that he is a PDF file, only to turn around and say, hey, I'm not saying I'm innocent. Dude, that's insane. Actually, one more thing before I want to end the video, but this is going to be the last video I'm going to make on this topic ever. If I need to bring it up again, if it's like in case of an emergency or whatever, then I'll bring it up. But other than that, I really do not want to bring it up. I hope this is the end. I've been wanting to make a video about Black Ops 6, which is still being made by the way, but it had to be pushed back like deadline after deadline because I had to make all these videos about Coco and shit, and it's pissing me off. Unfortunately for her, Scarlet wasn't quite finished as he then made female Eugene tries to transition into a male to avoid accusations. LOL. Part 3. Where things become even more malicious against Vampire or Coco. He then tells us that Coco had accused someone of trying to dox her when the guy posted a link to a stats website which her profile does contain her full name. In this video, Scarlet continues the narrative that Vampire, who he believes to be a minor, is actually a groomer, and he wants to make sure that she can't be successful in the line of work she is pursuing, and even goes so far as to flash her full name on screen for anyone to see, which is incredibly reckless at best, and at worst, is downright malicious. Also the same person who just happens to, uh, want to become a pediatrician psychiatrist, which I don't think you're gonna be one right after this video, if some doctors realize that Chloe Vampire, if 
that company sees all free videos of what I've been talking about you and whatever, they will literally say, uh-uh, we, we can't, we can't hire you. You're gonna have to be forced to open an OnlyFans as soon as you're 18. Let me be clearly honest, because you're not gonna win any type of money by being a psychiatrist, especially with little kids. But the story becomes crazier when he brings up there is now a second quote-unquote victim of this minor, who is 14, and he tried to get the kid to talk about it, but they wouldn't budge, and says they are kind of forced to speak out about it. And one of them is named G, which I think I mentioned in the previous videos, and then there was Osmany. So Osmany is a 14 year old, and some of my detectives and I, we tried to get him to speak, but he would not speak, so if Osmany, you're, you're kind of forced to speak about this whole topic because you need to address this ASAP, because there's no fucking way you're just gonna let this slide. When they aren't obligated to give anyone, especially this guy, a statement. But in this video, it just looks to be him believing and reporting what his friend in the server says without even verifying if that was to be the case. But he then tells us that we can't possibly comment on his actions because he won't do a face reveal. Guess what? It just so happens that both G and Osmani, they're both not of legal ages, and yet you still went after them and you overpowered them. We can't comment about me though, because I'm never going to do a face reveal. But he then acknowledges that Coco is a minor, once again, when he says that Coco is lying about her age to an older guy, but once again, all he is going off of is pure hearsay, as his friend had told him this stuff. Here. So, another message I'm going to bring up here is that she's a minor and the guy doesn't know. That's got a bit of a of an oof, see? Oh, and if you say that you're a guy, then why is one of your pictures, which also happens to have a red filter, why are you covering your breasts? If you were a goddamn guy, you say you're no longer using the vampire name, right? Why the hell do you have a picture of yourself with your username, or at least your old username? And guess what it just happens? Your fucking breasts are there. Like, shut the fuck up. You are not a guy. Sounds like another self-report to me. I warned you, you fat piece of shit. Where's the little girl? After this, the allegations against Mr. T. Lexify had surfaced that painted him to be a predator among other things, and Scarlet had made COD Zombies YouTuber Mr. T. Lexify exposed as a Eugene, stuff I witnessed on Twitter, which had been speculation on the whole thing, but in other moments of his video, he calls Reagan out for how happy she looks in the photos, and says that her body language comes across as she loves him. Are, are you just trying to say that Lex is the actual pedophile and he actually- Oh my god! No, 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 no way. No way. This is where she also has to um, say some shit. Because there are some pictures of her with Mr. T. Lexify. Like, hold on for one second. Ain't this you? Like, aren't these pictures with you and Mr. T. Lexify? Like, hold on for one second. And you seem to be smiling in all of them and giving a reaction. And your body language just speaks that you love them. So, did he really groom you? Or you just approached him for no fucking reason? This ain't adding up. Which I'm no body language expert, but I'm not quite sure that's how it all works. Body language is a pseudoscience, which is often characterized by contradictory, exaggerated, or unfalsifiable claims, often met with confirmation bias or tunnel vision, which is what he uses to call the allegations into question. After uploading this video, Scarlett had made another video where he covers Lex's new statement on Twitter involving Reagan's diary in An E-Girl Eugene Gets Exposed by Cod Zombies YouTuber, Mr. T Lexify, I'm tired of these E-Girls, where he shows his bitterness towards others on Twitter for getting more engagement on the story than he does, which comes across like he wants to be the one who cracks this 
his story and doesn't want people stealing his thunder, which really doesn't make any sense at all. We got a fucking code Eugene up in the fucking house. I have to be the one who has to talk about everything. No, fuck these people. Fuck everybody on Twitter who seems to be the only ones who like are getting views and whatever engagement. No, I'm the one who's supposed to be talk about this shit. Probably the smartest thing he has ever said is talking about how we can't trust either side in this story as they both look to be untrustworthy sources, but this line of thinking quickly dissolves into, I'm tired of these e-girls. So seriously though, what the actual fuck? So Lex released a statement about how his ex is being a Eugene, but the problem is that this Eugene also happened to release some evidence that Lex himself is a Eugene. So you can't trust both sides or you can't trust Lex's side or Ren's side, which is why I'm here to break the odds and make sure everybody understands that this is not just a one-sided thing. This is a dual-sided thing because these e-girls, man, they have been getting let off very easily most of the time. I mean, Alinity got forgiven. Pokemon is still around selling her scam cookies. Like, what the fuck? In this video, he also brings up his own conspiracy about how the e-girls are trying to make a narrative that all women are innocent and all men are guilty. He relates this story to the videos he made on Vampire, and history repeats itself when he accuses Reagan of posting pictures sexualizing herself to her audience of minors. But he has absolutely no way of knowing the demographic of her audience and so is making a baseless claim. Not only that, okay, but these e-girls are trying their best to make sure that essentially all females are innocent and then all the men are guilty as charged. Which is very surprising considering most of your fan base are probably minors and you're posting pictures of yourself, essentially sexualizing yourself. Now, I posted a, a video like this, a vampire doing the exact same thing. And what do you know? There's a site named Passes. Now, for those who don't know what Passes is, Passes is kind of like a com combination of OnlyFans and Patreon. So hold on a second. You're trying to post of Mr. T Lexify trying to be a pedophile, but then you force this content, this actual content, you push it out to minors, and then you literally expect that, oh shit, like Lex is accusing me of being a pedophile. Time to accuse him of being a pedophile. That's not how it works, lady. That's not how it works. But like before, he just runs with his theory, talking about it like it's a fact when it has yet to be proven. And he also gets the timeline of these allegations wrong. This is the point where Scarlet chooses his side in the drama, and through his own bias, he begins to sweep for Mr. T Lexify, trying whatever he can to make Reagan look worse compared to Lex. Where the story continues to become more complex, with new pieces of information and evidence being slowly added over time. Just when you think you have it all figured out, something else drops and contradicts everything you once thought. Which Scarlet actually thinks both Lex and Reagan's lives should be ruined for doing this to each other, and that they are both bad people. But he does lean towards Lex's side more than being a neutral party. And then they walk away trying to like ruin somebody else's life. When in reality, I think both lives should be ruined for the fact that, you know, they're both doing this to each other. And the case of Pure Soft is actually much worse than what Lex has, has ever done. However, strangely enough, he makes a comment saying that Reagan wasn't groomed because she was enjoying it, which is really a poor choice of words. One more thing, let's not forget that I already showed pictures of these two, you know, being together, and the body language, as it suggests, she was not being groomed, but rather she was actually enjoying it. So it seems to me that she's trying to cause all this shit so she can actually get some of the fame that he has. Like at the end of the day, there's always innocent before guilty. However, when you kind of post yourself in pictures like these, we kind of have to wonder if you really are innocent or if you are actually guilty. So yeah, man, this is why I'm tired of these damn e-girls. They'll do anything to be at the top, just to be famous and get all that shit. Like just put the fries in the bag already, bro. In the next video, Scarlett had made Dr. Disrespect is back and is ready for more, which the context for this story is is Dr. Disrespect had come out with a statement following an allegation made towards him that confirmed that he had conversations with a minor that leaned towards something inappropriate. But when Scarlett addresses this, he calls it an oopsie 
which is kind of weird if you ask me. The fact that Dog has come back to Twitter, it, I, I don't know guys, I, I really don't know, because all we need is to see those fucking text messages, and in those messages, that is a clear way that we can judge Dog to see if he's a pedophile or not. Unfortunately, it looks like the only one we have is once again his statement, where you know, he says he made an oopsie by texting somebody. All we can guess is that there was a little bit of an oopsie. But other than that, guys, I think that's pretty much about it. After this video, Scarlett had made a response to the Smith plays, which gave him a bit of pushback from Pat's and Lex's communities. And instead of accepting what little criticism they had to offer and applying it to how he covered stories, he made this video. We have been attacked by the E-Girls simps where he gives the criticism he received the no you argument and spoke on how the world never holds women accountable for what they say and do. But then of course we got the problem, like usual, simps. Well, it just so happens that the Smith Plays decided to make a video replying to the whole drama where of course he decided to go after Lex. Once again, as I mentioned in the video, it's always about the man but never always about the woman. They never hold the women accountable. When this can easily be disproved proven by the many cases where women have been held accountable, whether that is in a court of law or within the court of public opinion. And when others call him out, he replies by calling them simps or defending Reagan without looking at all of the evidence, when all it could just be is they disagree with your take and how you went about defending your boy Lex. Instead of recognising what people had been criticising him for, he tries to say he had been neutral from the beginning, which wasn't strictly true due to how he feels about e-girls. He later says that we need to hold people accountable for what they say and do, which would be fine if it doesn't contradict his own logic, as this is a standard he pushes onto others, but just not himself. Like, these guys are utter fucking simps. And you know what? At the end of the day, apparently they say, oh, Lex is guilty, but then Ren is not. It, it doesn't make any sense. Hold people accountable. Like, again, the Johnny Depp trial. Amber Heard lost, were you gonna tell me? But he then informs us that the only way we can see things the correct way is by remembering the Johnny Depp trial. However, it just goes to show you how short-sighted he is, as you can't judge every situation, story, or even drama based on what happened in one case as that's called confirmation bias, which Scarlet Reaper is riddled with. On the 5th of August, Scarlet begins tweeting to a random person, which from the description sounds like Renzaru, telling them that he has gained a lot of subscribers off of Lex's story and off of the vampire videos because of the connections he had, which doesn't make him look any better considering what he said about vampire. Now we get to possibly the worst conspiracy theory in the video, titled Educating the World About Reverse Predators and Eugenes. Which is where things start to become even stranger, as he tells us that a predator is someone who ruthlessly exploits others. In a nutshell, a reverse predator to him would be a minor who is sexually attracted to adults, lies about their age in order to trick adults into a relationship, and then to exploit them for monetary gain or for social climbing aspects. However, there is one big problem with that theory, and that is, a minor cannot consent to a romantic or sexual relationship. Which you would have thought that would have been universally understood, and it's very concerning given his past. But let's go back down memory lane here when he was talking about Vampyr being an underage groomer, and the 13 year old had lied to her about his age. Did Scarlet come up with this reverse predator theory? Did he take her side into consideration? No! He completely ignored that part of the story so he could try and turn her into the villain of the story, which leads me to believe that he doesn't care about what is true, but what can help him grow his audience and get his name out there, which is wrong. But here's the thing, the description he gives us sounds a lot like what Lex would say in his response to the allegations, which sounds like he came up with this whole reverse predator theory as a way to combat the allegations against Lex. He then tells his audience that if you go onto a dating site, then there is a high chance that the women are lying about their age. Guys, if there's a chance that you see a girl in some dating site, there's a high chance they might be lying about their age. If you do go on a date with them, then ask them for their ID. And if they say they don't have an ID on themselves, run away. Run away as fast as you can. You do not want to catch a case while at it, bro. 
but he is basing this off of Lex's story and not off of a whole collection of stories, as there would be no way of him knowing that. He then provides anecdotal evidence when talking about his friend, who according to him also dated an underage girl who lied about their age, and left his friend traumatized when he learned of the truth. But this seems awfully convenient for the video's narrative, so you'll have to forgive me if I don't believe it. But who would be willing to use this term? Well, unfortunately, someone did. And it's very disappointing because the person who used this reverse predator theory to their advantage had been none other than Mr. T. Lexify, as when he came out with his own video, he cites it as to be what Reagan is as a way to discredit the things she was saying. Where common sense should have been applied, it seems Lex would rather grasp onto straws in his panic to disprove the allegations. Also, I know some of you people have been asking me, what does a UG mean? Well, the word UG has been taken from Birdman, but I did make some modifications to the definition UG, which is a word to describe a cringeworthy individual who will occasionally molest your mind with their behavior. They are typically either categorized by quote-unquote pickup artists, end quote, freaks, school shooters, pedophiles, predators, reverse predators, or even public nuisances. Now there's a donation sound for any streamer watching this. Quite the statement. If there's a lot of minors who are sexually attracted to adults, and I mean physical adults, then you know they have something wrong with them. And just like how we have to tell these Eugenes to stop touching kids, we gotta say the same with kids, you know? We gotta tell the kids to stop touching adults. Okay? Huh? After Lex's response had come out, Scarlett had come out with a new video titled, It's Over! Mr. T. Lexify released new statement, Ex-Girlfriend Pure Softy and others are done. He tells us in the previous videos he made, he had always been right, but he can recognize when he had been wrong, which is a false statement. He will tell us later that he never apologizes for the things he says as well. Remember how I made those past videos? I'm 100% fucking right. See everybody? I'm always correct. And sure, there are some times where I'm gonna be wrong, like in this case for the video about Lex that I made, but other than that, like, I'm 100% right, guys. Like, I've always been right, and nobody ever fucking understands me, but yet yeah, I'm always fucking right, guys. Like, it doesn't make any sense how I've been doing every fucking thing that I can, and yet look at this shit. He also tells us that people like Renzaru, who called Lex out on Twitter at the beginning of this drama, had been known to harass people, which he doesn't provide any evidence to back this claim up, and seems to stem from having a beef with Renzaru on Twitter, which comes across as petty. He continuously repeats that Lex is innocent throughout this video, and how everyone else is cooked. But that's not quite true either, as both sides are in the wrong, which shows that Scarlet operates within a black and white perspective. He then brings up when Renzaru called him racist for saying the n-word, not once but twice, and he says that he said it while reading someone's message in his live stream chat. If only he was like John Nick, then he wouldn't have made that mistake. Thanks for becoming a member, person whose name I'm not dumb enough to say. Thanks for becoming a member, banned from the fucking chat. Estrogen. Dude, I'm gonna take all the five dollars on these. Holy shit. Dude, I'm so mad that this guy is definitely doing this. I would really hate it if you kept giving me more money. I read out chat constantly whenever I'm streaming. So when it comes to that, well, of course, I'm gonna read out your message. I accidentally read out the N-word not once, but twice. The first time was in an Ascension first room stream, and the second time was in the whole video. Here's what makes it so funny, because Renzaru and everybody else wants to call me a racist, even though the definition of racism is about judging people by their skin color. And is saying the N-word, if you're like trying to read it out from chat, racist? No, it's not. I've consulted with many black streamers. I've talked to them about about this and you know what they told me no it's not fucking racist you read out chat that's pretty much about it any fucking racist you just they're just being assholes for no fucking reason and also they don't even know what i fucking look like they don't even know my own heritage they don't know my own ethnicities so that's kind of fucking racist to assume that i'm racist but you know what that, that's whatever Lex was the first one to reach out to me. He was right there on my fucking live stream. He was the first few people who actually reached out to me so we can actually publicize this. 
Before we get into the next video, there is something that should be noted, as throughout Scarlet's videos, people recognise that Scarlet had copied the formula of Birdman's content, which they call him Birdman Jr. for this reason, and it's something he wears like a badge of honour. But if you haven't seen Birdman's content, then don't worry, you're about to. As Scarlet responded to him in... R.E. I owe an apology to the Mr. T Lexify fans, replying to Eugene at Oh my god, it's Birdman with facts and logic. Facts and logic? Really? If this man had any logic, we might not be talking about him today. He starts off by comparing himself to Lex, stating that he shut down Vampire, showing that he is proud of going after a minor, and accusing her of some hard-hitting and serious allegations with absolutely no substance to them. Now, the third part is that, uh, obviously, Pure Softy has blogged me on Twitter. I've already kind of addressed this on my last video, but at the same time, I haven't addressed the fact that uh, she privated her account, or if I did, I must have forgotten, and I'm really sorry about that. So, I I'm kind Kind of like you know pretty pleased with myself that i essentially shut down a reverse predator and a pedophile for the second time because the first time was actually vampire i shut her shit down and now we're shutting pure softy down and likes fucking cooked her and that's great you know but unfortunately there's still some people that well still believe otherwise and that's a huge problem now a video we're gonna take a look at right now is from birdman who is one of my goats you know he's like essentially one of my youtube goats he's essentially the reason why i made this youtube channel in the first place and he's the reason why i have this fucking similar style of his and that's why most people actually call me birdman jr because most people think that i'm copying birdman but i'm just inspired by the simplicity of the content that's pretty much about it there is a difference between having a similar style to someone else's content and downright copying it despite his protests about it i'm sure some of you watching this video are white males uh, i bet a lot of you are i think if you're a white male and you go around apologizing to people for existing i think that's pretty weird when birdman says he thinks lex is weird for apologizing to reagan for simply existing scarlet misunderstands understood what the point had been and ends up saying that Reagan has been sexist and racist towards her kind. Just let that set in for a second. Hey, I mean, I kind of did fucking call this out. She is being sexist and racist towards her kind, considering she is white, which makes it so much funnier. He is talking about Reagan like she is an animal or some creature. And personally, I don't like Reagan. I think she is manipulative and an unreliable narrator, but calling her by her kind is disgusting and is something only degenerates would say. Oh, I didn't talk about what he was saying in those segments, you know what I mean? So it's like, if I'm not gonna talk about it, I don't need to watch it. I, I only addressed the stuff that I watched, but you know, that's, that's a hard concept for some people to understand. That's okay. But I thought I could post that and you know, we can move on, like we're all good. That was my mistake because I figured it would be pretty obvious what we were seeing and we would all be on the same page. But that's where I was wrong and that's where I messed up. I did not consider the fact that all of this guy's fans are fucking morons. I'm sorry, what? So are you just calling the people who weren't even fans to begin with morons as well? What? I didn't know that. So I would like to take a moment right here at the beginning of this video to formally apologize to all of the Mr. t -Lexify fans. I didn't know that all of you were this fucking stupid. Um, all right, bird. All right, you, you're just gonna call the Lexify fans stupid? And I mean, sure, some of them are a little bit Delulu. You're not wrong about that. But at the same time, some of us have been doing our research. Ah, uh, yes, your research. The reverse predator theory must have taken you a lot of research to come to that conclusion. But hey, this is the same guy who jumped into a 17 year old's discord to accuse them of being a groomer and didn't have the self-awareness of the implications that can be made towards his presence. You know, like actual fucking detectives? We've been doing this shit since 10 years ago, bird. Hell, we were the ones who fucking helped you out expose those two fucking new genes. And how exactly did you help Birdman expose these two? What, did you hold the mic for him? This is either very delusional or very egotistical or both at the same time the ones that were sexually assaulting people at, in public i'm not entirely sure what the hell's going on and again we were using the johnny depp trial as like something for logic so it, it kind of makes sense you're not making any sense at all 
When Birdman says there is a three year age gap between Lex and Reagan, Scarlett disagrees with this, even though Lex met Reagan when she was 15 and he was 17, a month away from being 18, as his birthday is in February, and the fan meetup event had been in January 2016, and they started dating the following year in July 2017, so that would make Lex 19 and Reagan 16 at that time. Based off that information, what she's saying in this caption does add up, and I doesn't add up. So just based off that, I thought it would be pretty funny now if she also happened to have a three year age gap as well, right? Wouldn't that be interesting? Because apparently his own words, not mine, he called her a pedophile. So I'm just wondering because I'm a little confused here. So maybe somebody can help me out. I need someone to explain to me why 21 and 17 is a pedophile and 16 and 19 is totally cool. Birdman makes a great point that could calls into question the hypocrisy of Mr. T Lexify, but this throws Scarlet Reaper into ultimate cope mode, which is the cringiest thing I've ever seen in a video and should have died back in 2015. Hold up a second, hold up a second, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I think we might need to run a code Eugene here. Warning, this is an official National Safety Institute broadcast. We have an official code Eugene. I repeat, Code Eugene. Stay tuned for further instructions. Okay, let me tell you something, all right, bird? First off, most high school relationships, most sophomores and fucking juniors try to date seniors. If that's the case, okay, because most seniors are gonna be like 18, 19. Here's the thing though, okay? It can't be pedophilic because the problem is, okay, is that when it comes to 19 and 16, this is the average age for fucking high school students. And as for 21 and 17, that's pretty much illegal because we're talking here about a full blown fucking adult who had intercourse with a 17 year old in which in one of her diaries she claimed that he raped her but then made love for two hours that doesn't make any fucking sense that's some eugene shit on that fucking diary but the fact that you had to pull that analogy right out of your fucking ass it's fucking ridiculous how the fuck can you make that comparison if that's the case then every high schooler in the fucking world should be fucking arrested because there's a one point where some of you high schoolers have fucking dated a fucking Jew there is no fucking denying that. So some of you obviously will have to be fucking arrested. Not me though. I haven't dated anybody who was fucking younger than me. I dated people who were older than me in my fucking school. It sounds like to me you don't get out often enough to see a woman. I'm just wondering what the cutoff is because, you know, based on his explanation, it seems that a, a three to four year age gap makes you a pedophile, but a two to three year age gap is totally fine. Which again, high school ages. High school ages, bird, you're not making any sense. I don't know, I'm just asking y'all, these are the rules that y'all made up, I don't know. You know, I think it's all pretty weird. You know, I think it's pretty simple. If you're an adult, don't date minors. And if you're a minor, don't date adults. It's as huh? simple as that. It's called a reverse predator. I educated the world about it. He said it, not me. I don't know what that means. What are you waiting for? I mean, I, I, I thought everything was cool. It's all normal. Nothing wrong. You're going to have a normal ass fucking relationship with somebody at 18 and 16 without making it fucking sexual. That doesn't make you a pedophile because if it's sexual, of course, that's going to make you a pedophile. You see, I find this segment very interesting, because notice how his argument is, arrest every high schooler then. Well, remember Vampire? How she was 16? She thought she got with a 14 year old, and they had actually been 13? Well, he had a very different tune when the genders were switched. But it's still a federal crime, bro. Like, she was giving out gok goks to kid kids back in the day. It's almost like he is a reverse white knight. I mean, he even says that insulting the man but not the girl is weird. I don't know if it comes across as if I'm supporting the girl in this situation. It does. So let me just make it very clear. She's obviously insane. I think she's weird. He's weird. I think anyone defending either one of them is weird. I think you trying to insult the man but not the woman is pretty much fucking he then tells us that if we thought Birdman had an unbiased perspective, then we would be wrong. And it's actually a biased take. And he has a complete meltdown about people not seeing things his way, despite his many leaps in logic he has here. Do you know how fucking bad that is that you have to 
make that fucking video again i was basing it under the same fucking concept that i made about the smith blade if he should post that fucking video or not and as it turns out maybe you shouldn't have posted that fucking video maybe you should have posted a fucking video about you actually apologizing because this is some next level ug shit i never thought the fucking go would dwindle down like this he was literally one of my inspiration to be a call of duty commentary channel and yet here we are this is some next level shit this is some eugene shit and once again guys when eugene reaches into his backpack you know what it's time to run i'm pretty sure he said the fucking thing unfortunately guys birdman reached into the backpack he got out that gold plated ak just because people were disagreeing with him about lex it's fucking unfortunate really how the fuck are you almost pushing 30 and yet you still can't seem to understand the fact that lex obviously is fucking innocent and i mean look okay guys i'm a fucking 36 year old male feminist i'm pretty much older than this fucking guy right here and the fact that i know that this shit just shows how much lex is fucking innocent you know you kind of have to question yourself right there look i may be a fucking male feminist okay but i ain't fucking standing for no bullshit like oh females should be having more fucking treatment than the men no that's some simp shit but hold on a moment he then goes on a tangent saying how he is the only one qualified to handle this situation that he and his detectives have done the hard work. I'm the only one who's actually qualified to talk about the fucking situation. Some of my detectives and I, we've done the fucking work. We've done everything we could to make sure that, oh hey, like if this guy's like as bad as people say he is, then okay, we're gonna fucking admit that, you know? We're gonna admit our, our faults and you know, we're gonna be sorry. If you want me to remake that again, just so I can make it simple for your vocabulary, then I'll do that. Cause it seems like you're just being in a special ed class. She ain't gonna be in bed with you little bro that, that's the thing this she ain't gonna bed you little bro is some high level degenerative talk little bro that's something i'd imagine a keyboard warrior in the comments to say not a youtuber he then goes through a list of demands for birdman to comply with so here's a few things well here's the thing that i want you to do delete the segment of that first fucking video delete the second video delete the third video and make a fourth video watching the whole entire bullshit Forget about the fucking Snapchat bullcrap, okay? Use the logic from the Johnny Depp trial. Use the logic that I made from my fucking videos so you can understand the situation a whole lot better. Did he really think his channel that has less than a thousand subscribers was in a position to be making demands to a guy with over a million subscribers? However, there had been something that Lex had accused Noah of doing which had been cheating on his wife and inviting Mini Lad to his DJ set, which again, Lex makes you a hypocrite and I highly condemn this action, as all you had to go off of was a video that doesn't show any interaction between them. Which brings us to this video, the worst YouTuber apology, where the entire video is believing everything Lex says and denying everything Noah says didn't happen. Myself, this is not someone that I condone their actions, Okay, then why didn't you kick him out then? Dude, that's not the job of the DJ, that's the job of the bouncer. Also, that's one of the worst things you could have ever done. Because when it comes to hosting events, right? Apparently, you're a super big figure. You know? You're a super big figure. And yet, apparently, you can't even get security out of all things. Not even like a paid entry. Oh, you could just enter for free. They could just enter for free. Okay, all right. That that makes a lot of sense. Totally not endangering or anything. You make your incompetent sound like an achievement. Look, dude, I know that you don't leave your house that often, but there are some nightclubs and events that don't make you pay to get in. But maybe that's past your bedtime, so I'm not going to hold that against you. My knowledge. <laughs> you have eyes right in front of you. Your face is literally facing the fucking crowd. How could you not recognize Mini Lad? What he fails to recognize is that Mini Lad is actually behind Noah and disappears in like the span of five minutes. Okay, so after watching that, not gonna lie though, that was one of the worst fucking replies. Better yet, one of the worst fucking apologies I've ever seen. Yeah, sure enough, it was bad, but the worst? Really? Nah, I think I've got you beat on this one, Scarlet. All aboard the toxic gossip train. You're chugging down the tracks of misinformation. The toxic gossip train. You got a one-way ticket to manipulation station. My 
legal team told me that I probably don't want to commit career suicide, but I thought I could fix this with a song. Yeah, that's right. They don't understand the power of a white woman with a guitar. But no, this is way worse than Colleen Ballinger. And obviously, you're never gonna fucking recover because obviously, let's be real here. We obviously know you invited Mini Lad. You just wanna make sure that you said you never invited Mini Lad just so then you can get people on your side, which is a big L because if you knew that he was there, oh, don't say it without my consent or without me noticing. But Scarlet, I thought you were promoting the message of believe all men, but here you are condemning a man for something you don't know is even true. After this video, someone had gotten into contact with Noah's ex-wife, where she had alleged Noah threatened her to stay quiet about the cheating incident, and that it happened on more than one occasion. Which the private conversation then made rounds on Twitter, where Scarlet had seen this, and tweeted out that Noah had threatened his ex-wife, which was probably the worst thing he could have done, because not only is this an allegation, but Mr. T Lexify then retweeted it, which exposed Scarlett's existence to a broader community, which would prove to be his undoing. However, he then posted a video talking about the allegations, but he presents it as a fact. Unfortunately, I can't show you the video because he has deleted his channel, but it would have been titled, Eugene threatens his ex-wife after he cheated on her with a streamer. Noah J456. However, before we get into the next part, there is something I want to address, as I feel like the way I went about the thumbnail and title in my last video was wrong to do so. And I want to offer an apology for that, as it should have been framed as an allegation rather than how it was, and I am sorry. Furthermore, I feel like I should have focused on covering the response rather than adding in something else that has yet to be proven. Even though I didn't talk about it like it was a fact, I can see where people would come to that conclusion, which upon further review, I came across says a bit overzealous. I have since made alterations in the thumbnail and title and I've touched on this in a pinned comment so it reflects what those screenshots are more clearly which are allegations and nothing more at this time and I have also reflected on this in the making of this video and I want to own up to this mistake I have made as I feel like it is important to hold yourself accountable when you feel like you have done something wrong. The allegation against Noah is that he had threatened his ex-wife to keep her silent about the cheating scandal so it wouldn't be used against him to ruin his career. However, the word threatened can mean quite a few things, as this could have been within the divorce proceedings, which does seem like it could have been just that, or it could have been something else entirely. But the thing is, we don't know to what extent she had meant in this private conversation, and that is the important part, something that Scarlet Reaper doesn't understand. Very good. A detective to the last. Tonight I mean to pay back the man who ruined my life. Our lives. This brings us to the 27th of August, where Scarlet Reaper had hosted a Twitter space to talk about the recent drama involving the zombie YouTubers, where he had been joined by some other YouTubers known as the OpBlock and FPS Diesel, who found him via Mr. T Lexify's retweet, where they began to question him about why he feels the need to get so deeply involved within the drama. And this is where his trauma story comes into play, where he revealed he too was lied to by a minor who posed older than they really had been, and that she had tried to grape him, which the op block was sympathetic to this story within the Twitter space. However, after poking and prodding the reverse predator theory, he got very upset at why they had been asking questions about himself. Sexually you want to talk drama? Let me in. Okay. Let now, me in. Now, let me read out the actual definition that have Oh, no fucking written. way he's bringing up a so definition. So you guys can actually understand yeah. this whole situation. Without, so, hold on, don't interrupt okay. me. Don't I'm interrupt sorry. me because I hate it. I hate it when I'm being interrupted. Oh, I hate it when I'm being interrupted. Okay, okay, you don't interrupt me at this point, uh, Dude, man just hater. Just, just gotta let you know that. Hey, hey, hey. Relax, uh, bro. Like you a... Chill out. Okay. Relax. You let, will, you let me fuck. Everyone yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I promise. I'm gonna answer your question right here. Because... You let me fucking... You, you let me fucking... In, Ask first, let me talk first, and then I can let you talk. No, Nav, you let me fucking speak as well. Dude. I'm just gonna say this, because this is all a little bit way too unorganized, and a little bit way too orchestrated, in a cosmic sort of way, 
to kind of essentially, and how can I say this, in a way that kind of actually makes sense for the viewers around here? Oh, I don't know. An orchestrated thing done by Reagan. Or for you guys to really, come he thinks this is Reagan. He thinks it's Reagan doing this. this crap. Like, did he really think people wouldn't do this though? With such an insane theory as reverse predators. However, what he didn't know was that Diesel had been streaming the conversation out, which had been revealed to him on Discord after he kicked everyone out of the space. After this stream had concluded, Scarlet had made a response to them, where he tries to discredit the people on the stream in Eugene harbors criminals on his streams and calls me a Eugene with wild accusations. Where Scarlet had gone out of his way to try and find what little dirt he could on Xylee, Quite, and Diesel, even going so far as to slide into the DMs of people that they have had beef with in the past, where he calls everyone on the stream a bunch of Eugenes, calls FBS Diesel's videos low quality efforts, even though his own content isn't exactly brimming with quality. He then compares himself to Moist Critical and everyone else to Sneeko, and says that he couldn't be beaten by them because they focused on the wrong topic. That's some grand levels of cope you've got there. But he then tells us that he won't apologize for the things he has said and that the members of that live stream are all social justice warriors and keyboard warriors. But the only keyboard warrior I see is Scarlet Reaper, which we will get to later in the video. And then one of my apparent friends, who we will not name here, but of course it'll be named in the clip and whatnot. They tried to be like a friend towards me, trying to apologize on behalf of me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I don't need nobody apologizing on my own behalf. If I said shit, I don't think I need to apologize. After all, in one of my other fucking tweets, I did say I'll never apologize. And that's clearly the fucking thing. I never apologize for my own fucking bullshit, okay? Like if I do something pretty much fucking serious, then okay, okay, I'm sorry, you know? Like, let's say I broke a fucking glass face or some shit like that. Okay, I'm sorry. What if I took somebody else's food by mistake? Oh shit, I'm sorry or whatnot. You know, simple shit like that. But you're gonna come talk to me and expect me to fucking apologize because of what I've been fucking posting online? I'm sorry, but I don't fucking apologize for shit when it comes to posting online. Because at that point, you're just making me dedicate towards the losers, also known as the social justice warriors. These fucking keyboard warriors, man. These fucking social justice Eugenes, man. They, they can't seem to know the fact that obviously, I said this in my fucking video, okay? It's always about the man they always keep talking about the man they always keep insulting the man in case lex but they never talk about the woman which is pure softy and here you come and say that lex is a fucking predator despite how many fucking videos we've talked about the situation despite how many fucking videos that everyone else has talked about this fucking situation despite the video that lex released and the document that he released you're still gonna fall for the fucking e-girl? Like, that's some sip behavior right there. But remember when he said that Birdman had inspired him? That he doesn't copy his content style, but it is similar to Birdman's? Well, here's the thing, he then tells us this. This is a game I like to call his words, not mine. I wanna carry on the trend of, of what we were just talking about, right? So we're gonna call this segment, his words, not mine. This is a game I like to call his words, not mine right so we're gonna call this segment his words not mine and this is gonna be wording shit from those videos and i'm gonna actually drop some of them clips in this video just to see if they're my words or their words in if you and cover drama you which you know, scarlet this. scarlet is covering drama when you cover drama there's certain rules you gotta follow right because you don't want to accidentally do something and ruin somebody's career. Because even if you were 10 viewer Andy, your video could blow up and somebody's like career or don't life pack. could be a uh, could be a risk. Right? Things dangerous things can happen to people, which is why the community's gotten a lot better, right? I know we're like defending ourselves after we just sat around and like dogged Dangerous things can happen to people, which is why the community have gotten so much better. I don't know, man. His words, not mine. 
but he doubles down on what he had said prior, talking about this allegation like it is a fact when it has yet to be proven. Noah G456 kind of landed himself in hot water, considering the f we just heard about how he cheated on his wife and whatnot. So I think it was kind of right to share those images. But the fact that he friend his own fucking wife, that, that just shows really that this is kind of fucking serious, you know? I wouldn't say this is more of like very damaging and whatnot, but his career was already being damaged prior to the bullshit that Lex fucking said in his video. So yeah. Oh yeah, and another thing too is that Lex was also being talked about by a bunch of people without any evidence, without any of the fucking bullshit that he released on his video. So they were pretty much taking everything from her document. So it felt actually very, very much biased. But he then makes the biggest exaggeration anyone could make when reacting to what Diesel says next. Scarlet, I know you're watching, so uh, yeah. just so you know, I'm gonna react to all your content and uh, you're not gonna be able to defend yourself. So you have your option right now, either defend yourself or I'm going to cook you over the coals uh, big time style. And I will personally make sure that it is a very bad time for you. You're going to cook me in the coals and you're going to make it a bad time for me. I don't know, man. His words, not mine. But then again, that's kind of a fucking threat, you know, that you want to actually kill me. We have to run a code Eugene up in here to, to find out that one of my friends. I'm not I'm, I'm just keeping a buck. Mm hmm. Spit your shit is a, is 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 as a pedophile would not only break my heart but break my trust in people because i i know what it's like to be exploited by someone older than me yeah scar scar is he's my friend so i i'll i'll defend him until i can't defend him anymore Scar is my friend, and I will defend him until I can't no more. But to find out that Scar is a pedo, it breaks my heart. I don't know, that's his words, not mine, which we're gonna get into that later. When talking about his friend accusing him of being a PDF file, that's not strictly the whole truth, as his friend didn't outright accuse him of being that, but he's saying it would have broken his heart if that was to be the case. They are speculating on what Scarlet's story had been. What Falgi had been talking about was, maybe he's not telling the full truth. They are speculating on this whole thing. They're not making an outright accusation here. I'm gonna keep it a buck. You know, do you, think, do you think that he's not telling the whole truth about what happened? That he's I, not really I... discussing his role in it? Because the anger and vitriol that he has... For someone who wants to have a public platform and a persona, sounds like he was doing something he wasn't supposed to, and he don't got the evidence because the evidence doesn't exist. Oh yeah, I, I now now that you bring it up, I I really I can't answer it in a sense because I don't know. That's okay, you know, and and I wish okay. I did know because if if he's mm -hmm. if he's telling us that. Oh, you know, I was catfished by a, a minor mm. who said she was an adult. At first glance, you'd be like, damn, it's pretty fucked up. Mm. But you also have to think about it. August as a whole has been very pedocentric, yeah. as you would say. Yeah, 100%. You know, a lot of people have been outed as creeps. So. To, to find out that one of my friends, I'm not, I'm, I'm just keeping a buck. Mm hmm. Spit your shit. Is, 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 as a pedophile, would not only break my heart, but break my trust in people. It gets even crazier because it just so happens that we have information and confirmation that Nav was simping from Pure Softy prior to me actually meeting him. So that kind of makes sense, you know, as to why I had suspicions of him. But he then says that his ex-friend had been simping for Pure Softy and that they have confirmation of this, but doesn't show any evidence of this simping because the evidence doesn't exist. 
He then begins to talk about his trauma again, which in a nutshell, he explains he met someone in a game that said that she had been older than she was. He then tells us that he had to push her away because he was going through a rough time. That not only did his pet pass away, but he lost a friend because he cheated on his girlfriend. But he also lost someone close to him. But then the girl had tried it on with him anyway. In his own words, she had tried to grape him. But I want you to remember this moment so put a pin in it for me. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. But he later found out from her friend that the girl he had been seeing wasn't the age she specified, but she had been 16. But the Snapchat messages were deleted, which is convenient. Another thing I also like to add up is that they tried to call me a red-pilled Andy and how I'm basically comparable to Sneeko and whatnot. Yeah, and that's another you know, thing. He, he knows how much he like tried to separate himself mm -hmm. when someone brought up Sneeko. Like he had a notable reaction. Yeah. Like he's like, oh no 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 no, yeah. like, not like Sneeko at all. Like oh, you're kind of protesting a little bit too much, buddy. Yeah, Scarlet is a perfect example of who the red pill look for to yes. gain money off of. Because he's still saying the same shit. He's still peddling the same bullshit, the same lies, and the same inf like like demeaning and demoralizing facts about women. This is the thing is like and 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 these are the same facts. This is how they get pulled in. Now he's saying that Sneeko's weird. He may fucking agree with Sneeko a couple of fucking you know months down the line. He may agree with an Andrew Tate. He may agree with a fresh and fit. If Scar wants to talk, he can come on, but you know, that didn't happen and they just called me like a SJW, which I don't know. It's weird. Every time I cover a guy that's like a red pill Andy, he's like they they call me like a left wing guy. Trying to put me in the same space as Sneeko is kind of like calling Donald Trump a fucking terrorist of the Middle East. And yeah, I know what you guys are going to say. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it also doesn't make any sense putting me with Sneeko. So Again, it doesn't make any sense. And calling me a super far right conservative is really funny considering I don't talk about politics in my own fucking channel. Like I never talk about politics in my own goddamn channel, no one in my own profiles. And I do make jokes and whatnot about this and that. Like hell, you're trying to accuse me of supporting Andrew Tay Fresh and Fit podcast, even though I don't even know what the fuck are those. Oh, and get this, also labeling me as a red-pilled conservative. It, it, it just really shows to you how much of fucking idiots these guys are. Well, how about we put that theory to the test and play Birdman's game, but with a twist. Your words, not mine. I, I, like, I'm tired of these damn e-girls, man. No one's serving the punishment towards her because she's a goddamn e-girl. On this girl, the female Eugene, as I like to call her. Because if anything, I'm trying to make sure that no other girl goes through the same shit that she's doing. I don't want any other girl trying to do exactly what she's doing, like grooming no, that's not how it's gonna work. You know, I'm not gonna fucking let her slide. You're gonna have to be forced to open an OnlyFans as soon as you're 18. Why is one of your pictures, which also happens to have a red filter, why are you covering your breasts? She's so worried about being docs, but then she claims she's a guy. If, if you're a fucking guy, then why would you be worried about a goddamn, like, statistics website containing your name? Well, writing that comment down, you just think that you're just gonna get in bed with her and fuck her? He ain't gonna fucking fuck you, little bro. I know after this video, she's gonna have a mental breakdown. Sexist ideology, incel coded, and anti-woman propaganda doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Guess what just happens? Your fucking breasts are there. Like, shut the fuck up. It's always about the man, but never always about the woman. They never hold the women accountable. No one talks about the girl. It's always about the guy. It, it just shows how, like, small brain she is at the end of the day. It seems like nobody still wants to hold the girl accountable. But you know what? Let me catch my son trying to fucking defend an e-girl who's clearly guilty. I'm just gonna smack him out of here to the fucking baseball park. I'm about to get that home run, if you know what I mean. And guess what? She sucked dick off of many, many guys. And guess what? It's just for you to fucking gain attention. This is some leftist shit.
Are you serious with all these damn e girls? You're just white knighting her to just get a little bit of that teenage pee. She's not gonna let you fuck her. Like, I I'm trying to save you guys from potential embarrassment from this girl. Hey, I mean, I kind of did fucking call this out. She is being sexist and racist towards her kind. Okay, guys, I'm a fucking 36 year old male feminist. I don't know, man. Your words, not mine. You seem to be really tired of these e-girls, or how about when you call Reagan by her kind? Not exactly the best choice of words there. He then starts bringing up Quites and Xylee's past in order to play guilt by association on Diesel. Then again, he's affiliated with a lot of people, and one of them that I like to address is Kawhi. Now, for those who don't know, Kawhi is a YouTuber. And for those that don't know, he has almost 2 million subscribers or some shit like that. Now, it just so happens that he had some controversy, which of course, one of them he was the fucking victim at. So that's great and whatnot. You resolved your fucking bullshit. But the other one that I like to talk about is Slazo, which he's another YouTuber who's currently inactive where there was sexual abuse allegations from his ex-girlfriend, Che. And, you know, they put in screenshots and whatnot, because that guy had to get a lot of fucking therapy. But as it turns out, all right, is that even though that Slazo proved the allegations, it turns out that Quite was involved with that group, along with a few others. Essentially, he kind of ruined a man's whole reputation for a supposed sexual allegation. I kind of understand why the hell these so-called drama YouTubers do the things they do? And it's because they have no fucking life whatsoever. You know, that's very interesting. But even more importantly, Scarlet doesn't address the rest of the story and just leaves the audience hanging. Maybe because it would go against his narrative. And it really shows that he can't give an accurate and faithful presentation of the facts. As it also says, on the 29th of July, Quite posted a twist longer, apologizing for their contributions in the group, saying they acted impulsive, and bitter, which quite in the twit longer had sounded quite remorseful, but I guess those details must have just slipped his mind. And quite having the ability to apologize for his actions puts him leagues above Scarlet Reaper. But listen carefully when he addresses Xylee. Now, another person I also like to talk about, which was also involved with this shit, is Xylee. And again, for those that don't know, Xylee is a YouTuber who also happens to talk about drama. And they have almost 11k subscribers. And unfortunately, she has some serious allegations about herself. And if you don't believe me, watch this clip real quick about somebody trying to talk about her put an ip address mind you i'm not a huge fan of salvo so i actually don't care that whatever salvo is claiming like whatever i don't care but what i'm saying is like if we want to be technical here and if i'm reading this right because I, i'm definitely not going to sit there and watch 18 hours of god knows what i'm not going to do that however um i heard the cliff notes and if what I'm hearing is correct, that Xylee had posted up an IP address and it was Salvo's IP address, if that information is correct from what I am hearing, that's technically, you can count that as doxing. Hold up. So apparently what this clip is trying to talk about, if you watch the full video, I think you'll actually understand what's going on. But for those that don't know, I kind of got a little bit of the gist of it after watching multiple videos of the same thing is that Xylee had some beef with another YouTuber named Van Luke 7 who apparently, and I don't know about this, but brought in Salvo and Salvo's just another typical fucking Eugene. And what Xylee did was essentially post his IP address which and then got him doxxed or some shit like that. Hold up a second. You're telling me that this motherfucking YouTuber put his IP out? She fucking doxxed him. Ain't no fucking way. Hey, Diesel, are these the people you want around your fucking community? He goes into this clip saying it's an allegation, but the clip he provides, the woman doesn't even know if the information she had read had been correct or not. But he then runs with it anyway, like he doesn't value what is truthful and would rather twist things against the people who criticized him for the things he had said in his own videos. 
but it still comes down to the conclusion that Xyli should be locked up and that she is a criminal without properly researching what actually happened. Motherfucking suck. You're telling me that this woman right here, Xyli, is a literal criminal? Oh my lord. This is, it couldn't get any fucking better. So far, we got a guy who essentially canceled a YouTuber so hard out of the platform and social media, and then we got a criminal. Diesel, that ain't looking good for you, but hold on a second. The fact that you guys are literally harboring criminals in your own fucking stream, it just kind of shows really how much you really don't give a fuck about all this past drama. But here he claims that he is being defined. And apparently, in and out behind the scenes, out me as a goddamn pedophile. <laughs> brother the amount of definition that's about to happen oh brother oh i'm sorry i meant defamed he then says when people type 07s in the chat of the live stream that would mean their birth date meaning they are minors which he then proceeds to call diesel a groomer for this but if he were to actually put in the effort to properly research this he would have found out that 07 means a salute not their birth date, which is a Google search away, just so you all know. Come on, Captain Scarlet, research is not a dirty word. My guy is grooming minors! And before you guys say anything about the grooming aspect, it's not about the sexual kind of part, because if we look at the definition of grooming, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the second definition of grooming says the practice of preparing or training someone for a particular purpose or activity. Which again, that's literally your fucking stream talking about me. You're trying to groom these fucking minors into try to attack me on my own platform. Which, you know, has been sort of trying to happen, but we kind of all did a prevention there. But what he doesn't understand is when you accuse someone of grooming minors, people are instantly going to assume the worst, which not only can that ruin someone's career, but it can ruin their life as well. But as we have seen before, Scarlet doesn't care if he has to burn someone else's career down with these lies, he only cares about how he can benefit from the ashes. And not taking that into consideration just really tells you about his character more than he ever could. We're all about women's choice. I'm sorry, can you repeat that one again? I couldn't hear you very well. Yeah, no, Feminists are all about women's choice. Hey yo, call me a fucking ignorant or some shit like that. But I'm pretty sure that according to Britannica over here, that feminism is to believe in full social, economic, and political equality for women. The fuck do you mean choice? I'm pretty sure feminism is about equality. I don't know what you mean about choice and whatnot. Maybe you're talking about the Roe v. Wade type of thing. Again, I don't like to be political about this shit. Feminism is about having the same rights as they should with a man. That kind of makes some sense. Calling it a choice seems a little bit too disrespectful. I'm guessing this guy didn't really play attention in school, as yes, feminism is about women's choice. I mean, that's what the first wave was all about, allowing women to make their own decisions in their lives. But because this guy plays the game of semantics and is desperate for any way to get an own, he completely missed this. And again, this is a Google search away. It just goes to show you that when he said Diesel's videos are low quality effort, this was just a projection. He then combats when people accused him of being sexist or racist by getting other people to fight his own battles for him. And the message you get from it is, I can't be sexist. I have friends who are women. I can't be racist, I have black friends. Newsflash Poindexter, you can still be both. The allegation of racism derives from what he had said on an old account, known as Lendrick Kamar, which funnily enough he replies to himself on this account. And he does this with other old accounts like his Project Fairness account, something that he founded. Which he also tweeted out that publishing Diesel's first name isn't doxing, but since Scarlet wants to play the game of semantics, maybe we should be inclined to do so as well. The sexism allegation comes from what he says in his video and how he conducts himself when covering stories to do with women. As I said before, when it happens to a guy, he will defend them until the lol cows come home. But when we swap the genders around, he will demonize and attack them in his commentaries, even if it's completely unwarranted. 
However, later he will run with, he didn't call Diesel a predator, even though this tweet would say otherwise, comparing him to people like Chris Tyson and Dr. Disrespect, among others. Along with this video he made on Diesel, again subtly calling him a PDF file, with the song, I Like Little Girls. When Diesel reviewed the video about him from Scarlett's video, and saw the part where one of his friends had protested about him being sexist, Diesel had looked up her public art account on his stream, and Scarlett does what he does best. He twists the truth and makes out that Diesel had been stalking his friend, and then goes on Twitter to say how Diesel had been targeting minors. So remember all of this when we get to the confrontation. But on his alt account, he had been referring to himself as the most logical person in the commentary community, which aren't the words I would use to describe him. This world isn't about trust. It's about dominance and submission. It's about power. It's never about trust. On the 29th of August, FPS Diesel had hosted a live stream titled YouTuber Called Me A Criminal Monkey, where he brings on Scarlet Reaper to explain his side of the events, where Diesel had asked him some questions and let Captain Scarlet ramble on until he cooked himself. Let me fucking add to the fact that you know, hey, Noah cheated on his fucking wife, but I don't know how to back it up because I don't have the evidence. Oh hey, this guy literally posted it. Let me retweet it. That's not evidence. That's what I keep telling you. This isn't evidence, okay? You keep calling it evidence. This isn't evidence. Yeah, that's at least on his head, not mine. Okay, so you could share information that, for all we know, could be wrong, and you don't respond with any responsibility to that whatsoever? Well... So you could just post lies, and then what? What am I supposed to do exactly? Say, oh, I'm sorry, or whatever. No. Now, I think Scarlet thinks people would see that he is weak for admitting that he was wrong in covering the allegations the way he did, and his friends or viewers would see him as an untrustworthy source, or maybe he feels that if he was to do that, he would be betraying Lex. However, it shows integrity that you are willing to take responsibility for something you said or did that had been wrong, and apologizing for that. A willingness to reflect on your actions as a streamer or a content creator will help you to grow and evolve over time, and shows that you have self-awareness, which is something Scarlet has yet to learn. Integrity as a YouTuber or a streamer is vital in covering these stories, as it means that you value the truth more than agreeing with the most popular opinion, and that you will call yourself out and hold yourself to the same standards that you would otherwise impose onto others. But when Diesel says that even Keemstar retracts statements and corrects information he got wrong, Scarlet plays guilt by association, again, because of something Keem had said in the past. Which is very interesting as when we look at his history, he can't exactly talk, as he has said the n-word, and this is confirmed by his own words. <laughs> Wait, no that's no <laughs> Motherfucker! I hate you! You Oh my god! Oh, there he is. I read out chat constantly whenever I'm streaming. So when it comes to that, well, of course, I'm going to read out your message. I accidentally read out the N word not once, but twice. The first time was in an Ascension first room stream, and the second time was in the whole video. The definition of racism is about judging people by their skin color and is saying the N word. If you're like trying to read it out from chat, racist? No, it's not. I've consulted with many black streamers. I've talked to them about this. And you know what they told me? No, it's not fucking racist. Oh, so you're in a group chat with Daniel Keem, aka the guy who said the hard R back 10 years ago? Oh, that's great. Well, I don't, I don't understand. Is that like an own? Uh, he did say the hard R to somebody named Alex, like at least probably okay, 10 and, years and you ago. Have, and you have a channel in your Discord server called General Unhinged that's just filled with people saying the N word in jokes. Your point? Okay, did I say, okay, th did I say anything in that fucking channel that it would incriminate me? Well, I don't did think I, so. Did I go around and say the N-word or was it Keemstar? Oh, are you trying to fucking twist this on me now? Like, are you trying to say that I say the N-word in that channel even though I never did? 
Another interesting point here is when Diesel confronts him on the demographic of his audience, as we saw in the clip. He said that they had been minors, but all he has is an assumption at best, which doesn't make him look like a trustworthy source, which he tries to weasel his way out of any type of responsibility for what he had said in his video, but tells Diesel that most normal people would hear both sides out, but that isn't always the case, and that's a fact he needs to learn, before hurling serious hard-hitting allegations around but he then gets cooked by Diesel when he traps Scarlet with his own statements, which pushes Scarlet into a contradictionary corner, where he tried so hard to avoid any sort of wrongdoing and accepting any accountability for the things he says online. Yeah, like, trying to dox him because someone else brought him into a fucking group chat, and then you have to be petty and dox him and shit? Don't you think that's a little bit too far-fetched? You're doxing a person because you're that fucking petty. Okay. Now, even if I would have, even if I, even if I would have a fucking problem with you, I wouldn't go that far, you know. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through this. I wouldn't go that this. far to fucking dox you. I'm gonna walk you through this because I know you're not part of the community, so you don't know the lore. So that was part of something called the Tea Party Group Chat leaks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Salvo was. He doesn't know that? the story. Can Xylee please tell you the story personally? I'll kick her, or you can kick her right after she's done. As I said, as I said, I got the gist of it. I didn't say I know the full story. Yeah, well, I said I got okay. The gist. I will tell you this right now. One, that IP address that Xylee showed on stream, one, by accident. It's by accident. Mm -hmm. Okay. That she showed on stream by accident is wrong. Salvo was not living at that location at the time that she showed that IP address. He was living mm -hmm. in a completely different state. Okay, okay. that is true. However, the person however, who reported on that reported incorrectly that Xylee had doxed him. Two, it was also Keemstar that posted that, and he had posted that because Salvo was signing on to a Drama Alert owned Twitter account, and that's how he knew. Okay? At the time. But by the time Xylee showed that, he was not living in that location. He was hundreds of miles okay. away in a different location. When you are streaming, you are putting yourself in danger. Even I'm putting myself in danger. The only reason why I'm not complaining that much is because okay. I'm trying to have but fun. Do doxing, right, as a crime would have to be with malicious intent directed at a specific individual. Okay? Mm-hmm. And none, of, and none of those criteria are met for that. Mm-hmm. But then again, you can also be a petty bitch. And do that shit by mistake. Yeah, and Xylee can be petty. Nobody ever said she wasn't. She's a drama channel. Like, You called me a groomer. Do you like to elaborate on that? What do you mean? I called it a sexual type of groomer? Have you forgotten... Oh, oh, wait, actually, no, you were halfway watching No, I just said you called me a groomer. But... I, I watched the video last night, but you did call me a groomer. Okay. Here's your definition of groomer right here. Now, we're not talking about number three and whatnot. We're talking about the practice of preparing or training someone for a particular purpose or activity. In this case, okay, your stream is kind of an activity kind of thing, all right? And your own viewers are coming to attack me on my own live stream i'm not saying that you set them up okay but you indirectly did it mm. hell even i could fucking be responsible for that too and what else what else do you Never have for me it's 11 months so you're not gonna refute any of that 22 years so you'll just accuse me of being a predator and then back it up with you just gotta trust me what if I turned around what right now mean? and said the same thing about you? Really? You're going to go that? You're going to you're going to say that I called you a fucking predator. You did. Then, I never even fucking said that in my own video. You did. Most Guys, normal I'm people would watch that and, and say that you an called me a pedophile. Time to go back to high school. No, because I'm pretty sure, okay, is that I added a fucking disclaimer saying before you fucking think that he was doing anything sexual, let's look at the definition of grooming according to the Oxford Dictionary. All right, let's say I groom a minor. What am I doing to that minor? 
Huh? What's the end goal of that? Well, you're going to fucking tell them to attack somebody. If you mean, like, the non-sexual way, obviously. Really? Did I call you in any way a fucking pedophile? No. You said... I did not. Okay, let me go if over your points. If they want to interpret it that... If you they said want to that my that audience way, is minors. You said my audience is minors, right? Mm-hmm. And you've repeated that. Your evidence for my audience being minors is... Trust me. Correct? Trust me. More like I take my word for it. Take my word for it. That means trust me. Source trust me, bro. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do you, believe, do you believe that I'm a groomer? We don't believe that you're an actual fucking groomer. I'm asking your opinion. In your opinion, do you believe that I'm a groomer? No. Okay, so that would directly go against the point you mentioned in your video. <laughs> and now, All right, this argument. Sure. All right, sure, Luca. <laughs> Listen, man, if you don't want to focus on the conversation and want to end it, we can end it. Seven celebrates 11 months I mean, dude, I'm looking at both fucking Diesel, sides I know you're quick. trying to be good faith, but okay, there's I get no it, Jake. reason enough, for Enough, enough. I'm trying to talk to this guy. I'm trying to take this guy serious. Continue. Okay. I'm going to repeat it again. Do you, Scarlet, believe that I am a groomer? No. No. In your video, you claim that I am grooming my minor audience. Is that mm -hmm. true? Yes, that is true. Okay. So now you have just presented an opinion that is contradictory to the one you put in your video. Yes or no? No. You're saying that's not because as I said, no. Because if it were contradictory, I'm pretty sure it would mean something else, like sexual. I'm He's not even talking about that. I haven't brought up any sexual connotations in this conversation right now, right? You Ex said I am grooming my minor audience. You said I am a groomer, right? In the video. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I just asked you, are you a gro like are? A am I a groomer, right? I ask you, in your opinion, based off of what you know. Not a you sexual a groomer. groomer. Not I'm not a asking that. Groomer. I didn't say that. So do you think I'm a groomer in the non-sexual sense? Yes. Yes. Clearly. On the basis of? You're 13 to fucking 17 age demographic. Do Which you have any evidence for that? Why would I want to have evidence about that when it's fucking there? What evidence? Like I, the the tweet the allegation is out there. Well, allegations well, are a evidence. tweet. A tweet is not evidence. A tweet is not evidence. Allegations are evidence. Allegations are evidence. No, no, they are yes. not. Yes, they are. In yes, they are. In no, in no, they are. In no, in no allegations are absolutely evidence. Remember when we looked at Scarlett's trauma story? How an underage girl had tried to rape him? Well, that's not exactly the case. As in this stream, we get the full truth to that statement, which is the dumbest thing I have ever heard before, and that's saying something. So you, met her, you met her in person? No, I met her in a game. Did well, I fucking uh, say uh, that? What I mean is, like, after you guys started getting together, you met her in person and she tried to rape you. Oh, no. So it was over, like, the internet? You, you, you could still fucking, like, yes, I said a game. She tried to rape you in a game? Yep. What, can you elaborate on that, please? I know that might be a little difficult for you to talk it about. It is a first-person video game, all right, that is used to actually socialize with a bunch of people. VR chat? Yeah. That's right. He was nearly graped by another player in a VR game. Let that sink in for a second. While the statement may be funny, it is also offensive to real grape victims in the real world who didn't have the option of escaping their abusers by simply turning off a headset, which leads me to believe that he made the whole thing up as a way to be more relatable to Lex's dilemma when Falgi had asked him why he felt he needed to get involved on a personal level. But even if he didn't make it up, it is still pathetic. But that's just my opinion, so take that as you will. 
After he left the call, he jumped on his own livestream and called his mods who began to tear him to shreds on getting cooked by Diesel, which shows at least someone in his inner circle has somewhat self-awareness. But it's pretty funny that he said he was throwing me curveballs. Well, if you are going to come out with some wild claims, then people are going to hit back with some hard-hitting and sometimes difficult questions. Diesel, I think our time has to be cut short because I'm getting a phone call as we speak. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that I actually take this phone call. So I will go for now. Sure. You have a great rest of your stream. If you have any questions, I'll stay in the group. Feel free to reach out and we can hop on a call again. For sure. I'll make sure to ask that. All right. Take it easy, Diesel. <laughs> oh, Lee, shit. <laughs> Oh shit! So yeah. All right, we're good to go, everybody. Scarlet, you did what? good. Great. You did good, Naughty. Scarlet, good work. Good work. What's up? I mean, Dude, that was. I'm, I'm, there's I mean, no easy way to say this. That was fucking I mean, dreadful. You know, you know, so uh, Scarlet, you should have been more prepared. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, I know, but he was throwing me curveballs and whatnot. I mean, he, you're still cooked. Scarlet, you should not. And I mean, I cannot fucking say this with enough like, ferocity. You I mean, should not I have sorry, you, you should not have mentioned the R chat. Not no. talking about the shit. You have like, one fucking job. Okay, I had one fucking job. But don't worry though, and I think that job is gonna be taken care of. If the guidelines but, work, I mean, you still cook. You, you know how it works. But he then says that job will be taken care of if the guidelines worked, which means he falsely flagged the stream because he got owned in a debate, which Diesel had been quite civil towards Scarlet regardless of what he had accused him of. Unfortunately, this isn't quite where the story would end. Yeah, but no, but, yeah, but no, oh my fucking god, guys, shut up. I had a phone call, okay? I had yeah, a phone call. phone call is probably the best thing that could have happened to you today. I was fucking glad that I got that fucking phone call. No, stop! Leave me alone! What's the matter, Scarecrow? Can't handle your own medicine? Stay away, please! No! Soon after this, Scarlet had uploaded one final video titled, What's Next for My Channel? I Quit Drama Commentary, where he tells us that he won't be making any more videos surrounding each drama as it comes out, and will only be covering dramas he wants to tackle, but also he wants to pursue giving out criticism towards gaming companies such as Treyarch. But his Twitter account tells a very different story, as his alt account tells people to put Cope and Sieve, or Beckett, as he's more commonly known as, on a watch list because he reacted to the debate and his shaky response video. And he then tries to contact Team YouTube about Diesel making fun of him and this was the same guy who called himself the most feared and blocked person on COD Zombies Twitter. Where it seems like the most feared person on Twitter is now running scared since he's now purging all of his alt accounts. He had also been tweeting out stuff like this, which has a similar sentiment to that of Mama Max. Okay, so if I believe Noah when he says he didn't invite Minilad to his event, then I guess I am one of the following, and he wonders why people don't like him. He then tweets out, At this point, I am playing a game. Lex's side are playing chess, while these retards are playing checkers. Again, his words, not mine. Dude really wants to be Dr. Disrespect at this point. He then had decided to try and frame Diesel, the op block, Xylee, and Beckett for getting his channel terminated. However, if you were to click on one of his past tweets that showcased one of his videos, it would take you to this page. This video is no longer available because the uploader has closed their account. Another lie. Why am I not surprised? He then starts talking about why people shouldn't trust drama YouTubers, and it's quite disgusting and disingenuous to put 
push that onto them when we have already seen that he won't properly research these things before tweeting or making videos on them. Which he also brings up the death of Tony Ray Winchester, or as he was known as, Sir Tony Ray in RuneScape, to try and dissolve the drama YouTuber's credibility, which makes him look even worse. He then went on Twitter and posted this. For those who don't know, I shut down my entire career because of a traumatic event that happened to me back in 2023. Unfortunately for those that don't know, I was involved in a situation that was of a romantic interest in a video game where someone claimed they were 19, but in reality, they were three years younger than that. I was 21 at the time, grieving over the loss of what was a person who meant a lot to me. My orange cat Bruno, who passed away in November, and I found out about it five days later. My former friend, who cheated on his own, at the time, girlfriend with his ex-friend's ex. Unfortunately, I was taken advantage of by the girl that has given me trauma, proceeded to sexually harass me when I didn't want to budge. She decided it was a great idea to screw me over and potentially even hurt me to the point where I'm afraid of most people now. Her former best friend revealed to me the truth and I thought I may have lost said truth until I got a hold of her again and she sent me this, the truth of what exactly happened. The former best friend whose identity will not be revealed has confirmed to me again that the girl did lie about her age to me by me asking her the question, no. I did not force her to say anything. I was glad I pulled the receipts by the skin of my flesh. Also, this former best friend is no longer affiliated with said girl, as she is disgusted by her actions, and also no longer hanging out with her in-game figures. I let people speak from their own minds. I just don't like it when people talk over me, or interrupt me, or change the subject from a conversation's original topic. I'm already dating someone as we speak, someone who is honest about themselves, and are both adults, FYI had vented about this to them alongside another situation I've talked about before and they have told me that it was not my fault and that they aren't mad at me. My character is all about not apologizing ever, but I have to break character once in a while. I do apologize if I broke anyone's trust and I apologize for this action. It has not been repeated again and I am doing way better than before and I have still got my loving, caring friends, family and pets always helping me along the way. This apology may seem as poorly written, but it's all because I can't write very well. Once again, there is a language barrier. English is not my first language, so I do hope that there are people that will understand. So, first off, the apology doesn't seem genuine at all, as it looks more like he is just apologising for not having the receipts on time, and he doesn't apologise for the spreading of misinformation against not just the YouTubers spoken about in his videos, but to Vampire for accusing her of being a groomer and revealing her name in his video while recognising that she is a minor herself. Secondly, these messages are not the original messages he had with this person. These were was sent more recently, and we don't know if this person had been the girl who revealed the truth to him back then, or just one of his random friends. And on a third note, it doesn't matter if this is a character you are playing as or not, it doesn't give you the right to screw with people's lives by spreading misinformation about the people you don't like, and you should give a genuine apology for the things you have said about others. But he then says in a tweet, I love you guys, no matter what. Even if something does happen to me, don't cry. I'll still be there with you guys. And then he posts this with the caption, Never forget, which I've been told this had been the story of a COD TikToker who sadly took their own life after being labelled as a PDF file. So it seems like he used this as a way to tell people to back off. But soon after this, Reagan had returned with a video addressing everything, which again did not do her any favours and claims to have received death threats and harassment from Scarlet, but doesn't show the evidence of any death threats. Although she does 
show some pretty questionable statements which are very disgusting. Scarlet Reaper didn't limit this to attacking the argument, but the person behind the argument, which is wrong. If you begin attacking the person, you end up becoming your own worst enemy, and you turn what you think is the villain into a victim, which is counterproductive in Scarlet's goal, as now she has an excuse to say, hey, look, my ex has been sending this guy after me, which is like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. It is only going to make things worse. And Scarlet again doubles down on Twitter, stating, I don't care if it's harassment. The fact I have to put my own heart out because I went through the same stuff Lex went through shows how much of a bitch you really are. The same stuff. Oh, you mean in VR chat, right. Sounds like something I would see on Dr. Phil. VR chat traumatized me. Let's play his words, not mine again, shall we? As he said this, I mean everything I say about these threats to you, 100%. I don't know, guys. His words, not mine. He then starts coming out with random stuff when critical eyes look towards him, which is a massive cope trying so desperately to convince people that he is in the right, which he then changed his Twitter. This guy thinks he's fucking Batman. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Okay, so this would normally be where I would wrap up the video, give you all the ending monologue, you know the drill. But here's the thing, I wasn't expecting this guy to come back so soon and to renovate his content on his second channel by combining commentary and analogue, which I think is actually pretty cool, I'm not going to lie, but I wish I could say it's some interesting stuff. But it's just the same cope as before, you know, calling Pure Softy a PDF file and defending his lord and master Lex. But then today, something new had dropped. He was lied to dot mp4. Talking about Scarlet Reaper. Yeah? What? You see, Mr. Diesel, unfortunately, it just so happens that Scarlet Reaper is gone. And do you know why exactly? No, I don't. It's because of your actions. You see, labeling him as a predator was the cause as to why he's gone in the first place. He has completely disappeared everywhere. Well, that's good, right? You went under his skin. You cyberbullied him off the platform. Yeah, but that was because he's a fucking pre- No, 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 no. Do you even know what truly happened at that time? No. I was not a witness of it. Exactly. What do you know about Scarlet? He went and dated a 16-year-old. He self-admitted that on my stream. Do you realize the consequences that could have happened? Did you not realize that he said that she lied about her age? Really? Well, it's still his job to check up on the age of whoever he meets. No. You know, I kind of find it quite funny that Scarlet Reaper doesn't have the capacity to hold himself accountable and to reflect upon his actions, but he has the capacity to write a full-fledged script that blames everybody else for his own actions. So after all the stuff that you've seen in this video, you can now see what he is, and that is a professional victim, someone who will poke the bear, someone who will cast out these allegations onto other people without any substance to them, and will try to destroy someone else's career so his can blossom. But then when he gets called out, when he has to suffer some sort of accountability for his actions, he suddenly becomes a manufactured victim. 
Scarlet Reaper may have been a character trying to play his part in his own demented games. A tool to be used to deflect from allegations, a troll malicious in his nature, or perhaps just a boy playing dress up hunter. But one thing is for certain, in the last few months he has twisted the truth perverting events to discredit others for his own personal gain, regardless if he spreads falsities in his hunt for glory, doing whatever he can to ensure only one opinion reigns supreme, which had been of his own design, hurling allegations at people without properly looking into the facts of the matter first, and having no care of who he hurts along the way with his reckless and deceitful attitude in content creation. If one does not hold themselves accountable for their actions, then why should they impose that standard onto others? Where he plays the victim card when someone brings to light the things he has done and said, and a refusal to even apologize when he does get it all wrong. What am I supposed to do exactly? Say, oh, I'm sorry, or whatever. No. Scarlet Reaper has flown underneath the radar throughout this whole ordeal within the discourse, and all it took to expose him was a simple retweet by Mr. T. Lexify. If it hadn't been for that action, we may never have known of Scarlet Reaper and his actions within his content, and he may have just slipped back into the shadows, ready to continue this false crusade. Before we end this video, I want to thank the Opblock and FPS Diesel in the making of this video for providing their insights and for their hard work archiving the videos before Scarlet could delete his channel, as I couldn't have made this video without their help. So please consider subscribing to the Opblock and FPS Diesel. Thank you all very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing what you have to say about this story in the comments down below. But be sure to share this video out and sign up to join the British Alliance today by subscribing and turning all notifications on so you'll never miss an upload. And if you want to see the videos earlier than everyone else, along with having your name up here, then consider becoming a member today and I will see you all next time and be sure to leave this video having a good one.